and with the Baleful Strix, which draws me a card. <laughs> you know? But Cedric was like, well, I'm not going to let it even resolve. But Okay, so we have another game for you. Uh, it's uh, uh, Brian Braun Duin and Anthony Eason. Uh, Brian is uh, playing Esper Stoneblade, Anthony Eason is playing Goblins. But uh, as I said, a different Goblins. I mean, he actually has some, some very interesting uh, creatures. He's got Kiki Jiki. Um, he has War Marshal in his deck, and he has, uh, you know, uh, he has uh, Prospector as well. Now you might remember, um, just two years ago, Anthony Eason in the finals of the U.S. National Championship, he was eventually defeated by Josh Utter Layton. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that was a mono red list that yeah. Anthony Eason took to that tournament. And yet again, he's playing mono red again. So he's turned up with the first turn lackey. Uh, Brian plays a uh, plays a card that he's. Uh, deck is named after? I believe in Worcester, Mass, uh, at the Open, Anthony played uh, the Palioko um, joking deck Panda Control, a black-white <laughs> control list. And uh, he was just having a lot of fun at that event. Here, he's making it serious. <laughs> he's like, I've got my red list. That's what I'm going to do. I know red. I like red. And, you know, we can see here, Anthony Eason currently uh, was, is number two in the standings behind um, Cedric Phillips. And we'll so, see if he can continue to stay with at pace. So, Anthony Eason was willing to trade his incinerator and lackey for the first uh, first well, um, mystic, but uh, second he had uh, Brian had a second mystic. There are no answers that Anthony can bring to the table in game one, but we are in game two. So from the sideboard, it is possible that he could um, pyro it, pyrokinesis. But uh, I would be a little surprised if that's in his deck after sideboard. Yeah, I would be surprised too. I mean, also, if he had it in his hand, he probably would have uh, used it to get his lackey through um, rather than, like, trade two cards for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, not two, one, one and, and, and a cycle. I mean, he is not in a, in a good shape, I think, right now. Um, one thing I love seeing in uh, Anthony's list here is the utter purity here. There are zero main deck spells other than Aether Vial. All creatures, all day. Brian gets to untap with his... Uh, oh, Doctor. Oh, uh, this, this game is looking pretty bad for Anthony. Brian's able to equip a Umazoa's Jita, getting two counters on it, and killing... Um, using one of the counters to kill... That lackey. lackey is dead. Now, uh, Anthony Eason is several mana and several turns oh. short of a scrapper. Yeah, he's, is, he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's packed it up. Like, he, he knows he can't cut, like recover from another hit from uh, the Jitte, so decides to go back. Funnily enough, after sideboard, I, I really, really like favor the uh, Esper Stoneblade deck. Um, he has... He has zealous. a lot of weapons. Oh, absolutely. He has Dark Blast, Zealous Persecution. Um, he has Path Lingering Souls. Exile. Yeah, Lingering Souls, Oblivion Ring. And actually he has t two Humilities. I think Humility is one of those cards that like, has a lot... You know, I mean, Goblins is now kind of a utility creature deck. And turning all of them to 1-1s one -ones may really just kind of like nullify a lot of the, the, the power of that deck. Well, I mean, a humility for a deck like Esper Stoneblade, the cards that are its creatures, I mean, if it is going to trade a creature for a creature, it's probably going to be okay with that in general. On the other hand, for a deck like Goblins, it gains everything out of having those creatures be building each other up. Oh, I, one thing I just saw on the, in Brian's deck, he has two main deck engineered plagues. That is incredible. <laughs> and is Anthony beat that. <laughs> wow, that is incredible. So if you like engineer plague for people who don't, who weren't playing kind of like back then, it's black and two enchantment. When it comes into play, name a creature type, and creatures of that type get minus one minus one. Yeah. So that is so brutal against like the one ones of uh, of the goblin deck. Now a card like Curse of Death's Hold, that gets all creatures. This. The cheaper version, the original version, you have to choose one type and get them. As it turns out, the one type is basically the same as Curse of, Curse of Death Hole for, for Anthony because he doesn't have anything that is not a goblin. 
Now that's actually a really bold choice to be playing um, Engineered Plague because a lot of decks, it's not going to really do much against them at all. And then he's running two of them main um, against the decks that are trying to gain um, certain kinds of card advantage. You might name Wizard, but if you name Wizard, Brian Brondwin, he is playing a ton of Wizards. <laughs> <laughs> and they would all die to his own Engineered Plague. So this is something that is particularly focused, I think, on um, a set of cards. So, for example, Elves, Goblins, Humans from some decks. Yeah, Merfolk. Yeah, Merfolk. Um, and by, like, uh, let's say you're playing against Maverick, you might be able to just knock out all of the mana. Sure. So it, it does look like uh, Brian is basically going for <laughs> some, like, very, very powerful situations. I mean, he's obviously Stoneforge Mystic and search up Jitte and Battle Skull. <coughs> he's got the plays against certain matchups. He's got uh, three Jason Mind Sculptor, basically, which gives him a lot of range um, versus the control decks. Um, yep. Yeah, that, that, uh, that, that, I'm still in awestruck by those Engineered Plagues <laughs> main. I, I, I saw Engineered and I just thought Explosives, which yeah, I'm like, that's I... fine. Plague. <laughs> I really thought they were explosives as well. And we see a Cavern of Souls goblin uh, lackey. Brian's probably a, super annoyed that he didn't win game one, actually, because like you know that's what the card's there for. I mean, if, if you if you don't get to uh, get that free win, you've got to be annoyed sometimes. For those of you who are just joining us, this is round ten of the Star City Games Invitational in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Adrian Sullivan here with the Ben Sec. You can see on the left, Brian Brondwin playing Esper Stoneblade. He's inquisitioning on his turn one. And on the right, Anthony Eason shows his hand of Red Elemental Blast, Goblin Lackey, Goblin Incinerator, Rishidan Port with a Goblin Lackey in play. Yeah. The clock currently with six minutes left, that is the current time left in this match. So I think the Inquisition's probably going to go to the Incinerator because... Um, I don't think the red blast is that good. I didn't see Brian's hand, but it didn't seem that it was like too good. So it takes the incinerator because really what he's worried about is like um, him drawing more creatures. And he drew a, a wasteland. I'm surprised he he actually played the wasteland. Um, and the, the, port? The, the, the port rather than wasting but I guess he's seen it he's going for efficiency here you know uh, he puts that port down gets the mana uh, well, it's the same difference really yeah but now with that wasteland he's able to keep uh, Brian down to one mana for two, a couple few turns it'll be quasi zero mana now this this is a four wasteland four port we haven't seen four wasteland four port in a while uh, and that's actually one thing Goblins was uh, fairly well no uh, known for in um, in Legacy. Because it had Lackey and uh, Vile, it was able to use its land like very efficiently to suppress other um, other, other decks' mana bases. That was basically the, one of the big advantages of playing that, this deck. And now we see uh, Anthony says go, upkeep, tap your land. Keep keeping him off. Anthony, though, is only plinking away with two 1-1s. One yeah, he really needs to draw... lackeys haven't done anything really yet. really needs to draw a, a, a Goblin of Substance. Ooh, Ooh Matron. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly the card he needs. Now he's going to hit... Oh, play the boy. Matron. That's going to be Matron into triggers. Ringleader. Point. Yep. Gets, gets the Ringleader. This is... That's the great thing about Goblins, as I, I said before. I mean... There are so many like powerful draws you can have as long as you have like a way of getting your creatures out. So we have uh, a demonic tutor goblin goes and retrieves a fact or fiction goblin. Both are cast for free. I I, I think I think Anthony Eason was actually considering going for Siege Gang maybe. No, Kiki Jiki. Ooh. <laughs> because with the Kiki Jiki, he can copy the matron, right? And he gets Lackey, Ringleader, Tuck Tuck. Wow, that was almost an Owen Turtonwald uh, <laughs> Ringleader. <laughs> now, if you remember from Grand Prix Columbus, where he got second, there were several 4-0 Ringleaders he had. That was actually the first top eight of uh, Owen Turtonwald's career. 
now he's got since like moved to like player of the year like so he's come a long way since that tournament it was funny because at the beginning of that tournament, uh, some, some of us from Wisconsin had to talk him in to playing goblins. Uh, he was having cold feet because of uh, the existence of Flash Hulk. But, you know, we were like, you know what? You are one of the most experienced goblin players we know. You're good at it. And a lot of these people aren't going to know what to do. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Hold on. Why did the... Oh, wow. Yeah, no, that's... It's... So Incredible. what happened there is Anthony Eason tapped one of the lands during Brian, Brian Braun Dwayne's upkeep. Brian put man into his pull, then f f searched with the other land to be able to cast the Zealous Persecution to reset the table. Zealous Persecution basically gives minus one to your opponent's creatures, minus one, minus one, and then plus one, plus one to yours. That was unexpected. Yeah. So now he's kind of put at a decision whether he wants to play another vial at this point or he wants to put the lackey. The problem with the lackey at this, um, at this stage is that there are so many more cards that uh, Brian can have to, to turn it <coughs> off. He, but he has to play one of them. He's just got to work out which one he, he, he thinks is the right one. Um, I, if he wants to be slightly quicker, he, uh, he goes with the... Oh, he's, he's, he's going to... He's got both of them. Okay. He's going to say, have a turn of mana. Unadulter un un unhindered mana right now. Let's what see if he... Brian punishes him for it. He does have a Jason Mindstopper in his hand. So if he does have the fourth land, he's going to be able to... It doesn't look like... Oh, he might have the fourth land. I, ca I can't exactly tell. But if he does, um, he can land a Jace, which is probably not that great at this point, to be honest. Yep, he does have the land. Now let's see if he actually decides to have the, play the Jace here. Nope. He's going to play Stoneforge Mystic, which makes a lot of sense. Umezawa's Jite. Yep. Jite... Now remember, there is a scrapper in Anthony Eason's hand. Yes. So if he plays the Jite... Um, he can get one good use out of it. No, the, the, the scrapper could come down next turn. Oh, uh, but he can still get one good use out of it. You know, he can hold it in his hand. Oh, yeah, sure. He doesn't want to put it into play directly. He wants to put it into play and equip it in one fell swoop. Okay. Land for the ringleader? Oh, there it is. Lead some rings. Now, so the problem now for Anthony is that uh, he knows the Jite is likely to hit next turn. Um. <clears throat> I think you just have to let it, and because uh, you, you can't hang back on uh, on your port right now, you have to press into your own cards. Yeah, I think I think I think I agree with that. He so. might be considering whether or not Days or some other card like that could stop a ringleader, whether it's worth tapping out. Yeah, that, that that's true. As it turns out. Um, BBD does not have a, uh, a days in his deck. I think he might be going for the ringleader right here. Looks like it. He does have that Cavern of Souls on Goblins. I was forgetting about it because the Rishadin port with the uh, altered art was distracting me. <laughs> so I think he's going to cast another ringleader. Boom. Hoping for... Land, oh. land, land, oh. land. That is a zero <laughs> hit ringleader. Wow, that is a well. that is a huge, huge deal. Like missing completely there. Like he needed to just get like something going here. On a positive note, at least he doesn't have four lands on top of his library that's now. True. <laughs> no, that's true. That is true. In they come, and the lackey gets blocked. I think he's kind of given up on the lackey. So he wanted yeah. to try and get some damage through. I don't like it. Because I think he would have not blocked regardless. I think he would have not blocked regardless too. Yeah, so... And now it's actually worth Brian Brondwin's uh, while to go cast the Jit, equip the Jit, Jite, pardon me, and then uh, kill off yet another ringleader. Yeah, or, or just sit back on it. That's kind of the problem, I think. That, like, giving him the option to, like, well, not he can't, have... He can't sit back on it, though. The Tuk Tuk Scrapper. It's true, but he doesn't know it's, it's there. Um, doesn't he? Wasn't it uh, flipped with Ringleader? I forget. Uh, yeah, no, no, you, yeah. You're right, it was. Okay. Which, which is why he didn't play it main face and attack with it. Oh. oh. Anthony, so, Eason, you are... That, that feels a little dirty. That was a terrific draw on, on the part of Anthony. And Anthony attacks on in. Yeah, he, he drew a Gem Palm Incinerator, which will allow him 
provided that he's able to keep the goblins on the table, to to deal with the. Do we have a batter skull? There's oh. the batter skull. Rut row raggy. That is also bad. Um, and I mean, I think what he kind of has to do is that batter skull is so terrible for him. Okay, wow, that is a end of turn batter skull. He takes it, does not block, and then after has this batter skull here. This saves it from the potential for a tuck tuck scrapper to get rid of it, and the batter skull will get in at least one hit. Wow, that's a it's a big it's a big swing. And he gets ported. Gets goes goes back to seven. Uh, seven. Now he actually gets to flash in the. Uh, he's he's gonna kill the. Stoneforge Mystic. He's gonna try. Let's see if uh, Brian will stop him with some removal spell of his own. Yeah, if he has a removal spell, that's a huge. Oh. He's a like a sword to flashers or. Um, For those of you who are just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan here with Ben Sec. And you can see on the right Brian Braun Dwin with Esper Stoneblade, and on, sorry, on the left, and on the right Anthony Eason with Goblins. So he, so Brian's played the click in response to the incinerator. It's gonna get rid of the the tuck tuck. Which will allow the the Vatiskull to live. This is this is not looking good for Anthony because that Vatiskull needed to go. But he does have the matron to refetch it, so it's not like he um, he couldn't get it back again. He in fact he can like file in the matron, get the scrapper at the bottom of his deck. Almost definitely on the bottom, like he's going to get that. Kill the batter skull. <coughs> Brian's tapped out, so he can't return to his hand. So now, he's, Brian's at six. Almost has to block the uh, ringleaders that are going to come in this turn. Um, just to make sure he doesn't die, and and the big problem is, he's he's got the jitte in his hand. If he takes the four, plays the jitte next turn, he is able to kill only one creature with it. He can gain four life, but four life is not going to be enough right here, and th and that's going to take pretty much his whole turn. So he's unless he has like. A swords to plowshares, um, like available to him, he's going to really, really be in a tight spot. <laughs> You're in a real tight spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that, Mog War Marshal. Oh wow! So also he has the red blast, and uh, Brian saw the red blast too. So the the red blast is going to be able to suppress the um, the click if Anthony wants to kill it pre-combat. To make sure he gets him down to two. And it looks like what we're having happen here is uh, there's a, a judge on the table dealing with uh, situations. We'll let you know what happens when we find out more. For those of you who are just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan with the Ben Sec here. It's SCG Live, the Star City Games Invitational in Atlanta, Georgia. This is round 10. As yesterday, our first four rounds of the day are Legacy, and then Four rounds of standard will follow that. Yeah, and the, the finals are going to be in Legacy. And t to be honest, I think the Legacy format is m much more interesting. I oh, think the... it's amazing. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really, really excited to see more Legacy uh, later today. 
uh, and also tomorrow, I mean. I am as well. I am as well. So. If, uh, if you, for example, are a person that's not sure about the entrance into Legacy, you think it's just too expensive to get into, well, one thing to remember is that if you can invest in just getting a single deck together, and there are some cheaper decks to get together that are yeah. very competitive, um, the format is so wide open and diverse, you can just specialize in that deck and expect that it'll probably be a deck you can play for four or five years. Yeah, no. If not ten years. Absolutely. And and the card, like, also, if, let's say you wanted to actually, like, get into Legacy and stay there. The, the cards, like, remain valuable for a long time. So, like, yeah. you know, the dual lands are always going to be good. I mean, you, and you'll be able to play them on multiple decks. And I think that there's such a wide variety of Legacy decks, you'll be able to find something of your style. Yeah. What are the non-standard Legacy decks? Like, would you play, or do you, would you play in a, in a Legacy tournament like I this? mean, actually in Legacy, um, I always play non-standard decks in Legacy because there are so many decks that you can play. As long as your deck is rational, as long as it makes sense, you could play it. Yeah. And uh, there's a huge value in your opponent not having played against you. So right now in Legacy, I'm playing my old Baron deck, which I've been playing since, uh, as Cedric Phillips joked with me one day, how long have you been playing that deck, Adrian? Well, I've been playing it since 1997. <laughs> and, you know what? Like I've qualified for the Pro Tour with it numerous times. I've won other events with it. I love the deck. And that's what I'm playing in Legacy right now. Mm -hmm. um, and that, for those of you who don't know what the Baron is, it used to be blue-green, but then eventually a card called Pernicious Deed was printed. And it's basically very similar to Bug Control, but it runs Gaia's Blessing and some other cards that are kind of very uh, Adrian Sullivan staples. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that'd be what I would play. Though I'm also super psyched about land tax, and I have a green-white prison list that I've been working on for a while. It's basically a tax rack deck. What about you? What kind of craziness would you play? So back in the day, I used to play uh, a lot of Enchantress. I love Enchantress. Actually, very recently, uh, Andrew uh, Cuneo basically has um, been uh, kind of putting forward a, a uh, Enchantress deck. He, he made top eight of uh, the Magic Online Championship series with it. Um, basically locks his opponent with uh, words of wisdom words, words of wind 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 that's what I meant to say yeah, yeah, words so of wind basically just keeps on um, drawing cards with the Argothian Enchantress or Enchantress Presence and then making them return all their uh, yep. like permanents to hand while I, making sure that he doesn't lose it I actually think that if you're playing Enchantress and you're not playing words of wind you're doing it wrong <laughs> and I've thought that for probably about oh gosh uh 10 years when did words of wind get printed uh, so, 2003 i yeah. think so words of wind for those who don't uh, know is a uh, enchantment blue and two and basically you can pay one and you can skip the next draw you would have and both players return a permanent to the hand so what that like basically sets up is it allows the enchantress player to return an enchantment back to the hand which is great because it um lets them draw another card from their um, en enchantress effects but it more or less forces the opponent to like lose a permanent. And with enough mana, and it's really easy to get a lot of mana with like Sarah Sanctum and things like that, you're, you're basically able to return, you know, five, six, seven permanents, sometimes infinite amount of permanents like per, um, per cycle. And then once you have it, you're able to keep them down to that. So. For those of you who are wondering why we're talking about Enchantress and Words of Wisdom when there are neither of those decks in play, we're waiting on a judge ruling um, on this match in progress. And so right now we're kind of just having fun talking about how awesome Legacy is. And it looks like uh, Brian Brondwin, the situation here is there might be a deck registration error. If there is a deck registration error, this is actually a fairly fortunate time for it to be caught because it looked like he was going down. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to be, if it is a deck registration error, um, one of two resolutions, most likely a game loss. But the other kind of resolution that happens is the it's possible to have it be a, a, a registration error that's corrected. Mm -hmm. um, but either way, if Brian Braun to win is, uh, is in fact losing this game, <laughs> How fortunate for him that this is the moment that he gets a game loss rather than a game that he's winning. Yeah. I, I know that uh, I have gotten 
more than a few deck reg errors in my time. And somewhere around 2001, I had a deck reg, reg error at, the, at a side event at Worlds. I had dropped from Worlds and I was playing in a side. And it was one of those moments where I was like, I was just about to make the top eight of this $2,000 tournament. <laughs> Uh. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it really is, it's, it's funny, I mean, I, I also have been playing tournaments for a long time. I still make this mistake of, like, writing my deck list the last possible second, just, like, <laughs> just in case I need to do some tweaks. And, right? and you see this, like, tons of players, basically, they're, they're like, hastily scribbling in decks, and they're often making, like, every yep. tournament, nearly every tournament has deck registration errors, so... Yep. Well, it's funny because I uh, was playing at another event and I missed the top eight of uh, Pro Tour Qualifier. This was maybe about a year and a half ago. And I registered a card. I can't even remember what the card was that I registered in terms of the English words that I wrote down because whatever I wrote down, it wasn't a magic card. Like, <laughs> I wrote down two words that weren't a magic card because my brain just kind of did some sort of weird contortion and I wrote down something that was like, Let's just say, uh, you know, um, I don't know, blue curtain. Obviously, I wouldn't write down blue curtain, but something where it was like, that's not a magic card. No top eight for me that day. <laughs> so we're back here at uh, the Star City Games Invitational in Atlanta. I'm Ben Sek. This is Adrian Sullivan. Hello, hello. We are halfway through the remaining legacy rounds on day two. Yep. So we're two rounds into that. We've had 10 rounds total so far. Um, the top eight is going to be Legacy, which was... The, the so tournament. exciting to me. <laughs> now, uh, we mentioned earlier that there were 11 different archetypes that were undefeated at, at day one in Legacy. Well, the thing about this is, with these 11 different archetypes, since this is a multi-format tournament, it's totally possible that when we get to our top eight, it might actually include decks that weren't in that undefeated group very, very, very reasonably. You can easily go 3-1 or 3-0-1 or even 2-0, or sorry, 2-2, sorry, and still push forward and make it through. And uh, let's see what the res resolution of this situation is going to be. It looks like we're going back to the game in progress. Brian Braun to win on the left, Anthony Eason on the right. Esper Stoneblade uh, in a rough situation here. Vendillion Click facing down an army of little red men. Little green men if you prefer. So he's, like, Anthony's actually just red blasted the click attacked Brian down to two. Really hasn't really given him much choice. It's, it, we're probably going to just finish the game right now. It, there, Jite is no good right here. He's facing down an army of uh, small creatures. Okay, and it looks as though um, the uh, resolution of this, the head judge has said, continue on, you know, we can correct this, and... Oh. The handshake <laughs> shows up a turn later. I actually think this was a very lucky thing for Brian Braun to win for this to happen because since he was about to lose anyway, mm -hmm. this means that a loss 